Hi, and welcome to our latest video covering Heck HMS for HeckRaz users. The new HMS version 4.9 was just released this weekend, so to mark the occasion, given that this is the Raz Solution channel, I thought I'd walk through a couple of HMS features that may be of interest to HeckRaz users. Now, this is just an introduction. I've actually broken this video into four parts, so if you want to dive straight into the details, you may want to skip ahead to, to the rest of the playlist where we'll set up the same model in both HeckRaz and in HMS and we'll compare the results. Now quite a few people are familiar with both RAS and HMS, but there are some people out there who only use one program or the other, and this video series is intended to help you cross those boundaries. So first of all, for some overall context, I wanted to mention the Corps of Engineers Hydrologic Engineering Center. So what the heck is HEC? Well, the HEC part um, is obviously part of the heck RAS name, which we're all familiar with, but you may need to be of a finely aged vintage to remember where that came from, which is HEC2, a DOS program that computed water surface profiles. Next in the lineup, we also had then three, four, five, and six, and you can see the functionality of those programs here. Um, but today we want to go back in time to cover HEC1, which generated flood hydrographs and was the predecessor of HEC HMS. Now, if you want more background on the history of these programs, along with a list of the HEC manuals that are published as hydraulic engineering circulars, to add some confusion um, by the highways department, have a look at surfacewater.biz slash HEC. You'll also find links to timelines of HEC's history, including mainframe computers, punch card readers, and links to an article by Chris Mader that shows a screenshot of HECRAS 1.0, which was actually released right when I was uh, starting a river mechanics class at UC Berkeley. Uh, I remember my professor bouncing in with an excitement that we had never had from him. Um, I can't say I necessarily shared his excitement that day, uh, but little did I know how big a role that new little Windows interface would play in my future life. And got my Cal shirt on today in commemoration of that day. So today we will cover the prequel to HECRAS, but since I've already got a video called the prequel covering pre-processing for HECRAS, I'll call this one the pre-prequel, since we can use the features in HMS to generate layers that we can then use in HECRAS before we even open it up. So um, I, as a quick overview, I just wanted to cover a little bit about the H and H uh, in HEC HMS, which both stand for hydrologic. But as I mentioned before, sometimes the H's, like the H in the highway department's HEC manuals, stands for hydraulic. So what's the difference? Well, in hydrology, the H, the first H generally, um, we talk about quantification of flow. And typically programs like HMS will quantify the flow and will have uh, a time axis on the x-axis and then the quantity of flow um, measured in uh, you know, cubic meters per second or whatever it is uh, on the y-axis. Now for hydraulics, we have the characterization of that flow. HECRAS is an example of that. Here's the old wireframe, which has now been replaced by the 3D viewer, uh, but you can see you know, velocities, uh, depths, shear stresses, widths, whatever you'd like, the characterization of that flow. Now, HMS uh, and RAS have increasing overlap. And we have, for example, rainfall routing. Uh, but of course, heck, RAS can also route unsteady flow hydrographs along the channel or a floodplain. And if you use direct rainfall or rain on grid in heck, RAS, it will quantify the flow and generate you a runoff hydrograph from the rainfall. And now the latest version of HMS also has 2D hydraulics built right in. So given this increasing overlap, when faced with a choice between the two, which model should we use? So we talked about the H in HMS. Now let's talk about the M, the model. So here is a model, or at least someone who is standing behind a model that he has built here. And this is a physical model that demonstrates in simple terms what HMS and similar programs do. You can put water in the rain buckets above uh, and look at what comes out after it flows over different ground surfaces. Now any fifth grader with an upcoming science fair project can put together something like this where you compare the outflow or the runoff from dropping the same amount of water on different soils and vegetation. Uh, if we want to compare this to rain on grid in a hydraulic model, here's one I use in our live courses. Uh, this is a model that represents a digital elevation model like the TIFF files that we pull into our HECRAS terrains. 
Now you can modify the terrain, putting in channels like this, but you're stuck with a regular orthogonal grid. Now I use this brownie pan here to represent my 2D area perimeter, and I'll overlay the slicer as my computational grid. That can be coarser than the underlying LiDAR and will give me cross sections along each edge. Now when I use model for regular inflow, I'll take a syringe and squirt in water horizontally, an upstream inflow boundary condition. But when we're talking rain on grid, I made this little contraption here showing how every single computational grid gets excess rainfall applied. Now you hold the plate flat like that and vary the tempo at which the bursts are applied. That's a varying temporal pattern. If you want to take advantage of gridded rainfall, you can change the angle of attack as well and introduce some spatial variation. Now if you compare that to what rainfall runoff routing models do, instead of representing the catchment or the watershed as elevation pixels, we'll have properties of each watershed like curve numbers, storativity coefficients, and other parameters that reflect the soil infiltration properties, vegetation cover, and similar features. Now when you pour water in with a known timing or pattern and measure the flow rate over time at the outlet, you'll see differences depending whether you got mud, clay, gravel, bark mulch, dense vegetation, or even just water in the bucket, like you'd see with rainfall over a reservoir, or nothing at all in the bucket, like you would see in a parking lot. So what you see here in this bucket um, can have a tremendous influence on the difference between the rainfall coming in and the runoff coming out. So I'm going to break this into a couple videos, as I mentioned. And in the next one, we'll download the new version of HECHMS, and we'll use it to delineate boundaries and flow paths. Um, and we'll import those into HECRAS. Then we'll use the shape files that uh, come out of it, out of HECHMS, to set up a rain on grid model in HECRAS. And then finally, we'll go back to HMS to show a basic model setup and compare those results. So I will put uh, more links for additional resources in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed this little introduction into rain on grid versus uh, rainfall runoff routing. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next part.